Well, praise the Lord. We're just so glad and thankful that we're able to come back and visit with you a little while and yeah. just to let you know Jesus still loves you. Bless you. Don't care who you are, what you've been into. He loves you anyway. My prayer is that if you don't know him, you'll get acquainted with him. Why? Because he's coming back. And he said he was coming back after his. And if you hadn't had a born-again experience, you're not his. I want to make sure that I pass from death unto life. And he says we know that we know that we know. <laughs> and I praise God that I know. Amen. And so we're just glad and thankful today for our unseen congregation, those that are there. My prayer is that God will reach down and touch you. And whenever this broadcast is over, uh, you'll be a different person than what you was uh, whenever we started. You say, well, what do you mean? I believe every time that we hear the gospel, it ought to change us. Maybe just a little bit, but it ought to change us somewhat. And so I'm glad that God is a changing God, that He never leaves anybody the same way. Uh, from day to day, He changes us. Why? Because He wants us to get a little closer to Him. And He wants us to have a little more wisdom of Him, a little more knowledge of Him, and a little more of His love in our heart that we might show somebody else. And so today, you see, is the day of salvation. We thank God for those that have stood by us and helped us out as we've journeyed along. And we thank God for those that have prayed for us, my, that lifted us up before the throne of grace and said, God, anoint that preacher. I, I told my church one time my, that there was people that they didn't really care for my way of preaching and so one Sunday morning when I got up, I told them, I said, I can tell you how I, that I can do a better job of preaching. And of course, everybody's interested in knowing. I said, pray for me. Not just, don't just get on your knees and say, God bless that preacher. And you pray for me. You pray that God would make out of me what he would want me to be. And don't give up. Pray for me every day for 30 days. And if God don't change me, then you get on your knees and say, God, there must be something wrong with me. And you see, it'll make a difference in your life. Why? Because if it doesn't do anything else, it makes you, it brings you a little closer to God. And whenever you get closer to God, you'll be a little different person uh, than what you was. And so I'm glad and thankful today that uh, God's still God. And he says, come unto me, come unto me. All of ye that are laboring heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. I'm meek and lowly in heart, and you can find rest for your soul. Well, we want to look to the Lord in prayer. We want to pray for those that are sick. I haven't heard from Sister Ruth for a few days, but, uh, well, of course, uh, for a week we didn't have no telephone, and uh, it seemed like that everybody in the country was looking for us, and nobody could find us, and uh, they thought we'd left. But no, we're still right here. The rapture hasn't come yet. Now when the rapture comes, I'm leaving. You say, well, you seem awful sure of yourself. That's right. Why? Because Jesus said I could. Amen. And I just believe him. I just believe what he says. And so that's the reason that I, I plead with you every Monday to get ready to leave. Because if you're not ready, you can't go. You got to get ready. If you were going to take a trip, you want to get ready. If you're going on vacation, my, you want to make sure that you had everything uh, packed and in its proper place. Well, honey, when Jesus comes back, you won't have to worry about packing everything because you're not going to take anything with you except what you gave away. That's all you're going to take is what you gave away. Uh, and so I, I know today that God's still God and so you pray for those that are out there that stands in need. My, there's a lot of people that needs prayer. And sometimes the load gets so heavy that I can't hardly carry it. Why? I'm because there's a lot of people that call me and say, we need prayer. Pray for us. We've got people that's sick. 
We just, I me and my wife was at Walmart a little while ago, and I, she met one of her friends, and I, she lost her brother. And so you see, those people stand in need of prayer. <laughs> Why? Because it grieves their hearts whenever we lose a loved one. And so you see, my, my, and that's the way we can get along uh, uh, down here and make it a little better uh, if we pray one for another. And so we want to pray for those that are sick and those that are afflicted. I want to remember Robbie. And I haven't called his name out for a while, but we haven't forgotten about him. I, I Larry and Sue, we just thank God for them. And my prayer is that they're getting along okay. And so you continue to pray uh, that God will move in a mighty way. I'm expecting an old-fashioned God sent Holy Ghost revival. And, my, and I know people say, well, what's that? Uh, that's a revival that don't want to quit. It don't want to stop. It just keeps right on going. And I've been in a few of them uh, in my time. Not a lot of them, but I've been in a few of them. We've started uh, a lot of times in the old church we used to pastor. We, I started a revival for a weekend. It may go for two or three weeks uh, before we finally quit. And I believe that's what God wants. We, he wants a revival that builds all the time. I know it's hard to get people to church. My wife, because we've got too much to do. We put too much between us and God. And so you see, we need to move all of that stuff out of the way. You remember what Jesus said? He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added to you. Mm -hmm. You see, a lot of times we let those things that God give us get in our way, and we don't go to church. We do something else. And so you see, we need to let those things go and begin to go where God would have us to go. Well, praise God. Didn't know I was going to get into all that, but I did. And so... Uh, as I, I often say, you know, that's I, I just give that to you. I'm not going to charge anybody for it. It's free. And, and so I'm glad today that God's still God and He's still moving on people's hearts and lives. And so you pray for us as we travel down life's highway. Uh, we'll be able to help others along the way and point them in the right direction. And there's only one direction that I want to go when I leave, and that's up. And I tell people, one of these days, the law of gravity will be broken, and I'm going to jump one time and just keep right on going. I'm not coming back. And so I'm glad today for the goodness and the greatness of God. And my, I, I sit around a lot whenever my wife goes shopping, and every once in a while somebody will come by, and they'll look at me, and they'll say, well, you sure look sharp today. I said, well, you can thank my wife for that. She can't make me sharp, but she can make me look that way. And so, you see, we just need to pray uh, that God will make out of us what he wants us to be. Father, in the name of Jesus, yeah. reach out and touch those that are there. Yes. Those, Heavenly Father, that don't know you in the pardon and forgiveness of sin. God, touch their hearts, touch their lives. Heavenly Father, they would realize that the time is so short, it's drawing near the time that Jesus is going to step out on the clouds of glory and he's going to call his church away. I, I believe God with just one wave of his hand. He'll just say, come on up hither. And, and God, we're going to leave. And so I'm asking you today, God, to touch them in a mighty way. God, we've got a lot of friends, a lot of loved ones people that are near and dear to us, but they're lost. And Heavenly Father, it seems that we can't reach them. And so I'm praying today, God, you send somebody uh, that they might be able to talk to them and uh, uh, go on and get them saved before it's eternally too late. Uh, now, Father, I pray that you would reach out, uh, uh, touch those that are sick, those that are afflicted. Heavenly Father, they just feel the touch 
of the mighty hand of God upon their hearts and their lives. And Heavenly Father, they would know of the will and the way of God. And so we thank you, Father, and my mind, because we know that in this old world we suffer. We have a lot of pain, a lot of misery. But God, we thank you that one day, whenever we leave, we're going to leave it all behind because we're going where Jesus is. And so we thank Him. We praise you today. Have your way in our hearts and our lives. And God, search our hearts through. If there be any ill will there, anything God is contrary, I pray, Father, it could be revealed to us that we can get rid of it because we know we don't want nothing to hinder us when the trump of God sounds. And we'll praise you and thank you for it in the name of Jesus. Well, praise God. All right. They're going to come and sing us a song. Good afternoon, Earl. Praise the Lord. We're uh, going to, I've revived an old song that came out back in the 50s. Uh, late and great Leuven Brothers wrote and recorded this song. And uh, it's no reflection on anybody that listens to it that does the preaching of the gospel. <laughs> but I like it and I thought I'd kind of sing it today. Amen. Preach the gospel in Kiev, boys and girls. I 
fine for the thing you have done for me. Thing so undeserved, yet you gave to prove your love for me. Yeah, the voices of a million angels could not suppress my gratitude. All that I am and ever hope to be, I give it all to thee. <laughs> to God be the glory, to God be the glory, to God be the glory, for the things he has done with his blood he has saved me with his power he has raised me to God be the glory for the things he has done <laughs> just yes. let me live my life let it be pleasing, Lord, to Thee. And should I gain any praise, let it go to Calvary. Bless you, Lord. With His blood, Bless you, Lord. He has saved me. With His power, He has raised me to God. For the thing he has done. Great God. Well, praise God. I'm so glad and so thankful that God is still God. That he's still calling people. Yeah. And he's still saying, Come unto me. Carolyn, you want to sing a song? No thanks. Okay. Thank That's you. all I'd ask. I don't know that. Jesus. Want to uh, read some scripture found in the fourth chapter of First Peter? And you pray that God would just have His way in our hearts and in our lives. You see, God, in all of His righteousness, wants you and I to have victory over sin. That's what He wants us to do. And how can we do that? Only by placing our faith in what Jesus did for us on the cross of Calvary. Why? Because we can't do it by ourselves. We can't do it within ourselves. We've got to let Jesus lead the way. And He will do it. He says, For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. You see, whenever we stop and think how Jesus suffered in the flesh, He suffered for one reason, and that was so you and I could be set free. Because we were in bondage to sin, bound by the chains of sin. We could not loose ourselves. And you see, Jesus came to fulfill the laws of God. And He did that. He fulfilled the laws. And so you see, that's the reason why, my, that you and I, we've got to look unto Him. Jesus was the only perfect person that there was. Mm -hmm. There was no other perfect person, and there's no perfect person today. You don't read anywhere in the lids of God's Word about the sinless saints. Why? Because there's not any. We all make blunders. We all make mistakes. We're all, we all do something, you see. And a lot of our suffering that we do, we bring it on ourselves. But all the suffering that Jesus did, 
He did for you and for me. You see, he suffered so you and I could escape suffering. Yes, I know we suffer in this life. But honey, there's another life that is coming. And he said it's a place where the worm dies not. Mm -hmm. Where the fire is never quenched. Mm -hmm. And people that go to that place, he says they're groaning and they're gnawing their tongue because of the pain and the misery. You see, a lot of times that shows a different picture from what people really think about hell. And we make a lot of jokes about it. Like if I go there, I'm not going to worry. I'll have a lot of friends. No, there's going to be a lot of people there. But you're not going to have a lot of friends. Why? Because everybody that's there is going to be pointing their finger, blaming somebody else because they're there. But you see, it's your fault. We don't like to hear that, but it's your fault. Why? Because today is the day of salvation. Today, you've got to make a decision. If you're listening to this message, you've got to make a decision. I'm either going to accept Jesus Christ as my Savior, or I'm going to reject Him. You see, that's not my decision, that's yours. And I know people say, well now preacher, you, you preach too hard. I wish I could preach like Jesus did. You know what He did whenever He looked at the Pharisees, the Sadducees? He called them a bunch of snakes. That's right, that's what He called them, vipers, poison snakes. Why? Because what they were teaching and what they I were preaching was not the gospel. It was not the law. They claimed it was, but it wasn't. Why? Because they changed the law. Uh, that it, it didn't sound anything like it did when you go back and read it in the Bible. And so you see, today's the day of salvation. If you go into eternity unprepared to meet God, you're going to have to walk through the blood of Jesus Christ to get there. Why? Because Jesus gave His life's blood. The life was in the blood. And whenever the blood ran out, the life was gone. That was His natural life. And so you see, we need to arm ourselves that we can suffer as Jesus suffered. My, yes, a lot of people go to church, but when somebody says something that they don't like, they get up and walk out and they quit. You're not quitting the church, honey. You're quitting on God. Amen. God can't help it what everybody does. And, uh, and we're going to get hurt. Do you think the preachers don't get hurt? Can I tell you what the fellow told me one time? He said, you know, there's more preachers eat for dinner than what they are chickens. <laughs> you see? And so that's what happens. My, after the church is over, the people, whenever they get together, they, uh, they pick everything that he preached, everything that he said, and I didn't like this part, and I didn't like that part, uh, and whenever they got done, uh, they could throw it all away, you see, because they didn't like it. We usually don't eat anything that we don't like. But I found out whenever I was a child of growing up uh, that there was a lot of things that was good after I tasted them. But it had, I had, I had an awful time getting me to taste them, but after I tasted them, they was all right. You see, that's the way it is with the Word of God. And the Bible says the Word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword, and it'll pierce right into your heart, right into the mire and the bone. And whenever it comes out, it makes a hole. It's an incision. And it hurts. If you don't think so, gouge yourself with something sharp and then take it out and look at the incision and it hurts. My, my. And so you see, he says, for as much then as Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. And you see, I've got my mind made up. I might have to suffer for a little while, but it's not going to last very long. Not near as long as eternity 
Even if I live to be a hundred years old and have to suffer every day, it's nothing compared to eternity. No way. But you see, I have a good time serving God. I enjoy serving God. <laughs> and so you see, it says, For all, for he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. You see, Jesus ceased. And uh, my, he, he wasn't confronted with sin no more. All the time he was here, he was confronted with sin just like we are. And the Bible says that he was tempted and tried in every way that you and I are yet. He was without sin. And there was no guile found in his mouth. No, nothing poison found in his mouth. And so, am I, and he says that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men. You see, men lust after the things of this old world. Jesus didn't lust after the things of this world. Men do. We do. You see, a lot of times we see things and we want them, and, and we want them so bad a lot of times that people will steal, they kill, my, they rob, they do anything to get it. All because of lust. I see it. I want it. A young fellow said one time, he says, I see it. I want it. I just got to have it. And so you see, that's what happens. When we think we just got to have it, then we just, we're going after it. But thank God there's a lot of things in this little world that I don't need. And I don't want it. Why? Because what good would it do? And he says, but to the will of God. For in times past in your lives many suffice us that we have wrought the will of the Gentiles. We have walked in lasciviousness, in lust, in excess of wine, reveling, banqueting, abominable adulteries, wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the excess of riot. That's right. You see, you as a child of God, the people that don't do these things, they want you to run with them. They want you to go with them. My, they, they feel like that you hurt them. They've done, you've done something terrible uh, because you've turned them down. You said, no thanks. Uh, I don't want that. I don't want no part of it. My, my. And you see, God knows your heart. And so He knows if if we're lusting after the things of this world or, or what we're looking at, if we really want it, you see, we need to seek after God. Seek after the knowledge of God. <laughs> and so he says, Who shall give an account to him who is ready to judge the quick and the dead? We're all going to stand before Jesus. And let me tell you something, honey. There's, yes, there's a judgment for the Christians. The judgment seat of Christ. They're not going to be judged for sin. They're going to be judged according to what they've done after they've gotten saved. Amen. The sin was judged at the cross. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Woo! My, my, my. But you see, those people that have never made a confession, they've never prayed, they've never sought after God, they're going to stand at the great white throne judgment of God. Uh, yes, uh, and you no doubt, you've heard the song which says, Search the books again. I thought my name was there. Why? Because he said the books are going to be open. And there's another book that's open, the book of life. And whenever you stand before him, he'll look to see if your name is written in the book. And if your name is not written in the book, he'll look at you and say, I'm sorry. I never knew you. Amen. Bless you. I never knew. Woo. You see, God's still God yet today. And he's expecting people to pay attention to him, to come to him. While there's time and an opportunity. The opportunity is going to be cut short. I want to skip ahead there just a little bit. I read down in, in verse number 7. He says, but the, all, but the end of all things is at hand. 
Did you hear that? The end of all things is at hand. Jesus is going to step out on the clouds of glory. And he's going to take his church away. And all of those that are not ready. All of those that are not ready. Do you hear me? All of those that are not ready will left, be left behind. And he knows whether you're ready or not. You see, there's not a thing that God don't know. He's all-knowing. Father, in the name of Jesus, you would reach out there today. Touch that unseen congregation, God. They might see, they might realize that the time is short. The end of all things is at, is at hand. All we're going to do is look around us and see all the evil in this world and all of the evil that's constantly happening. And so I pray today, God, that you'd intervene. Send that revival. God, one that can't, one that the devil can't stop. And so we thank you. We praise you today. Have your way in our hearts. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Is our prayer until this time next week.